Now this technique was originally developed for posterior composites. And we have mesial carries on this first molar. So the technique when doing this is to in inject the patient, get local anesthesia. I almost routinely use a dam. We then, while we're waiting for anesthesia to take effect, we put a matrix band around the tooth and then we take an impression inside the matrix band. So I'm injecting through it. There's a static mixing tip in here. This is an intraoral syringe tip. I hold this tip onto the surface of the tooth as I inject clear bite registration material into the grooves, into the embrasures, all throughout this surface. And this only takes like 15 seconds. It's a very small impression. You end up with something, you'll see it in a minute, that looks like a button. Now, to make it easier to cure through this, this is a mylar strip and you can barely see it sticking in here. I flatten that surface of unset bite registration material with a mylar strip. That allows the flat end of my light curing bundle on my light curing unit to sit flat and put even pressure on this flat surface of this custom matrix as I cure through it. It also allows light to go through more easily and you can even see some of the surface detail through the custom matrix. Now this is a custom matrix after it's set and it takes about a minute to a minute and a half to set up. I want you to take a look, it's not easy to see, but the subtle enamel irregularities that are in this surface. Notice the rounded marginal ridge. When was the last time that you did a posterior composite and you had a nicely rounded marginal ridge? So this is a small, again, it looks like a button made inside your matrix band. One of the questions comes up, well, can I use, do this without putting the matrix band on first? You can. The problem you run into is then when you use your matrix band, you have to trim this to fit inside it. And you can't trim it absolutely perfectly. So there'll be some areas where it doesn't fit nicely inside the matrix band. And in those areas, you're going to get flash between your matrix band and your custom matrix. So we, we cut a slot prep. This was not carious. It was badly stained. We now fill that up. And in posterior composites, I'm going to use at the minimum of two increments. My first increment, I build my contact using a, uh, using a contact pro. My second increment, I have to be careful that I don't use too much composite. And this is maybe the biggest difficulty that you're going to have in doing this technique, is that you're going to put in more composite than you need because that's how you and I were taught how to do this. And then you cure it, and then you grind away all the excess. This technique, what you want to do is put in just a slight excess of composite. Then when you put in your custom matrix, you're going to have very little flash. Now, the first time you do this, you're likely going to put in a lot of composite, and you're going to end up with some flash. There's some ways, and I'll review this training wheels approach that it can allow you to uh, do that, but uh, it's a difficult problem that I still have, that I'm still putting in more composite than I need. But about 40% of the time, I hit this right on. And when I do that, the patient gets up and walks out after curing. Now, when was the last time you did a class two composite? And you cured the composite, the pa you checked the occlusion, the occlusion was perfect, the surface was smooth, polished, the patient got up and walked out of your operatory. It doesn't happen. Okay, so here we are, we're curing the bonding resin. You, use, you do this the normal way you usually do. There's no special way. Then you're going to add your composite. Now notice in here, you see this composite sticking out of here? I spent minimal, if any, time contouring that composite. My only criteria at this stage was to check how much composite do I have in there? Do I have enough composite in that preparation. If I do, I don't need to contour it because when I force this custom matrix into place, it will force all the composite to the margins if I have a slight excess and you may have just a minimal amount of flash. So here I am contouring my composite. I can close my eyes and put a finger on this and put pressure on that for about 10 seconds that allows the composite to flow into the surface of my custom matrix. 
I then take my light curing bundle, and you can see part of it there. I match up the flat surface of the light curing bundle to the flat surface that I made with the mylar strip on my custom matrix. I hold this with my thumb and index finger. I put pressure on it as I light cure through it. This is untouched. You can see there's no debris around here. Take a look at this rounded marginal ridge. Take a look at the subtle, and it may be hard to see, enamel irregularities that make that margin look real. I challenge you to do this freehand. Yet, there was no extra time and effort involved in me shaping, finishing, or contouring that composite. Remember when I put the composite into this? It was sticking out of the tooth. It looked like a teepee. Now it looks like a beautiful marginal ridge. This is immediately after removing the dam. And again, this tooth looks a little bit light because it's dehydrated. A day or two later, we've made something that's nearly invisible with very little effort on your part. You save your time, you save materials, you save the patient's time. So everybody wins on this.